at 10 and 2 with three rounds left to go. For Perez, he's going to start things off with a Wandering Fumeral. For Hunter Nance, it's a Fortified Village revealing a Plains and an Oath of Nyssa. So Hunter will take a look at the top couple of cards, Rishkar among them, and he'll consult his hand before making a selection. My question for you in this matchup as we make our way through it, Perez's deck, I think, might be a little soft to Planeswalkers. Well, I don't know. He's, he's making some efforts here to, to have some game with three copies of Revolutionary Rebuff and three copies of Negate. Okay. That, that's a starting point. The two Dynavolt Towers do some work as well. Uh, I think if he gets out in front of Nance, that, that he can manage the Planeswalkers. If Nance is able to slip one through the cracks, then that's, that could be trouble. But uh, Perez does have a reasonable number of main deck tools to handle them. Nance has picked up a main deck copy of Authority of the Councils, two of them in his main deck here this weekend. A card that is more or less textless. A stanker. Yeah, against Raymond Perez. But that kind of goes to show you that players coming into this weekend really did not want to lose to Felidar Guardian and Sahili Rai, that combo. Yeah. That's why you see it in the main deck. The Lamphole Pacifist, a very nice card in the matchup here uh, for, from Nance's side of the table, as it's outside of shock range and it does put some pressure on Perez to tap out or at least cast some spell on his own turn to prevent it from flipping. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I, I think about, remember when Bant Company was the best deck? Mm -hmm. Duskwatch Recruiter? Yep. Do people even own that card anymore? There are a lot of ways. If you're interested, <laughs> if you're interested in spending mana on creatures to draw cards, you have a lot of options. When was the last and time you've seen one of those things cast? Been a bit. Yeah. And, and the, the 4X shock format is probably not going to be the time for Dustwatch. Not a great spot. Turn. Not a great spot for it. That's for sure. But once kind of a dominant card. Yep. Not seeing any play. And I agree with you. I think Pacifist is way better than that card in this spot. Because now Perez is, is kind of left with the decision of, all right, I have a Harness Lightning. Can I let this transform? I kind of have to, mm -hmm. because if Nissa comes to the party, then I'm in some real trouble. And with Perez having an Ether Hub, that gives him one energy. So the Harness Lightning trades with the flipped Lamp Hole Pacifist the exact same way. Mm -hmm. In with the Lamp Hole Butcher comes Hunter Nance. Perez is going to fall down to 16. And now here's an Oath. Top couple of cards. Here for Nance, he will select a Forest, so he's clearly in search of a land. The force will go to the grip. It might enter the battlefield here in just a moment. We'll see. It will. Follow up is Heart of Kirin. And now we'll see how much Perez cares about the legendary vehicle. Enough to disallow it. You can let that one go if you think you're going to be able to keep Nance off of creatures basically for the rest of the game. But if he's not confident, also, I think Perez is at risk of missing land drops here, in which case you just kind of have to cast a spell. Mm -hmm. You can't just say go, miss your land drop, and say go again. Here's an Anticipate. Perez is going to select a land here. This is a main phase Anticipate. Now, you saw the Butchers transform back into the Lamp Hole Pacifist. Pacifist can't really do much attacking here, so Perez is going to play an island. He'll pass the turn back, and it will not transform. So we go back over to Hunter Nance. Nance will draw a card. It's a copy of Rishkar. Now, Jaboka's Command, that's well, not around anymore. But putting a counter on Lamhole Pacifist may not be that hard because of a card like Rishkar. Yes. But you mentioned Revolutionary Rebuff being a card that matters in this matchup, and it takes care of Rishkar right there, which is pretty nice there uh, for Perez. Hunter is trying to cast a lot of main phase three and four mana non-artifact cards. Mm -hmm. Revolutionary Rebuff is uh, its a little bit on the mopey side. It's an easy card to make fun of. But in this matchup, I think it's going to do very good work. Uh, I mean, particularly with Nance missing land drops. I think Rebuff's gotten a little better. I don't think it's I don't think it's counter target ish combat anymore. My major concern with it is just you know how many times are people casting artifacts against you in this block? Sure. But if the matchup looks like this, I think rebuff's going to be a solid card. Shoulder shrug play a spell. That's a, the ultimate shoulder shrug play wah, a spell. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Authority councils that resolves. That is totally fine. This is a, a slightly odd line here, I think, from, from Nance here for a couple reasons. One is I'm just sort of in the market to crack a clue and look for land number four rather than cast the authority that cancels. The other is that it flips the, it flips the pacifist back because yeah. it's the second spell. Well, the first spell there for Raymond Perez was a doozy. It was a brutal expulsion, which dealt two damage to the Raymond Spectre and bounced the Lamhold pacifist slash butcher. 
So Raymond Perez is looking at a battlefield of a clue and Othinus and Authoria councils. And now he can do this mm -hmm. on his main phase and be very happy, which is a glimmer of genius. Scry two, peel two, get two energy. And if things are going really well for Ray Perez, he can play a land untapped and have rev rev revolutionary rebuff and or negate at the ready. Right. Again, Brutal Expulsion, it's not a card that you can play four copies of, but when it's good, it's going to be pretty darn good. Does Perez have land six? We've seen two different players this weekend with one copy in the main, Raymond mm -hmm. Perez and Kevin Jones. Yep. Nance will draw a card. He picked up a Plains, and he does have the Gideon. So is he willing to go that route? Going to be another rebuff, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm not the biggest blue player, but I'm liking rebuff in this format. That's all I'm saying. Nance will play a Plains. This is willing to slam down Gideon into what looks like a rebuffer and a gate. Well, he's going to try. He will succeed. Gideon ally of Zendikar has resolved. Starts on four loyalty counters. We'll see where he wants to take it here in just a moment. Looks like just a knight ally, and Harness Lightning is going to take care of the token. And it'll give Ray Perez an additional energy. Now Ray Perez will untap and draw a card. And now he's at that magic amount of mana. Mm -hmm. Ugh, nothing to do. Go. <laughs> Big sigh. Handful of lands, even though I've been missing land drops. <laughs> <laughs> it is torrential gearhog time here for Ray Perez, and we're going to see how Hunter Nance is going to try to combat it. Now, to note, authority of the councils does matter a little bit here. Yeah. It, it at least forces the gearhog to enter the battlefield tapped. Yes. Can't block anything. It's something. It's something. I, I still don't love Hunter Nance's spot, but it is something. I mean, if, if Nance has a stasis snare in hand, it's not out of the question for him to just dial up Gideon attack and then stasis snare the torrential gear hulk and hope that Perez just cannot beat a Gideon. Totally in play. That's. Oh, that's a good one to bring back with torrential gear hulk. That's that's a good one. I didn't even think about that. Nance will go start by sacrificing a clue. Canopy Vis enters the battlefield untapped. Is this a Nissa, perhaps? We'll see. Nance is going to untap those lands. He's going to make a knight ally. And just simply pass the turn back. Maybe a bit of a red flag there if you're Perez. Well, the problem is that I, I don't think Nance can allow uh, Perez to untap with a Torrential Gear Hulk. I think he's going to get shut out of the game at that point. So he's got to leave up the, the Mana to Stasis Snare. Maybe it involves, you know, you lose the, the token and the Gideon to the Brutal Expulsion, but you're at least not locked out of combat. Glitter Genius is going to scry two cards to the bottom very quickly, and Perez is going to go up to six energy and stasis snare. He already knows it's coming. So Torrential Gear Hulk down. Now Perez will draw. Picked another copy of Glimmer Genius. He's got a land to play in a mountain. But now let's try it. It's about managing overcoming this Gideon, which is such a powerful card. You can see the, the shoulder shrug there several turns ago when Nance went to try to resolve that Gideon, thinking it was very unlikely to be good. But I think he went for it just because this was his shot. Fumeral plus Shock is going to take care of Nance's board. A pretty good turn there for Ray Perez. Yep. Fumeral's no joke, man. No, it's, it's a lot of percentage points on the house. Yeah, that's a good card. Watching Jim Davis with submerged Boneyard in contrast, was painful. It's ugly. It's ugly. Oh, boy. The second one. The second authority of councils. That's a, that's, <laughs> that's a double mulligan. That's a double mulligan. That's for other matchups, folks. 
Wandering free roll there for Ray Perez. That is painful. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not good. It's not good. Our answer is basically all in at this point. And this is the kind of trade-off you make. This is why some people go to black green, white red, blue red, the enemy colors, because getting a creature land is pretty nice. The lands are so much better. Yeah. Also, Spire Bluff Canal against Fortify Village or Canopy Vista is not close in my mind also. But the part of the reason that Nance is green-white is because you get to play Gideon plus Nyssa. Yeah, I'm know? not saying there aren't payoffs, but yeah. the lands are much better for, for enemy color combinations. It's the real deal. And I know that we haven't seen a blue-green deck yet, but Lumbering Falls, I, I imagine at some point it's going to work its way into this format. Sure. Because that creature lands real good, too. Here comes the Butcher again. Ray will take four. He's down to eight. Nance will make a plant. And Nance is going to play a Westvale Abbey. A card that Perez may have some difficulty with. It's a slow burn, but it, it, he does not answer it cleanly. Truncher Gearhawk will enter the battlefield. Nance will gain not one, but two life because of authority <laughs> councils. <laughs> And that Torrential Gurok will come in onto the battlefield double-tapped. Brutal Expulsion. Take care of both of those, which means Gearhawk can look to try to take care of the Nissa now. And still has the Wandering Fumarole as well. Mm -hmm. oh, and that'll transform back, too. That's a pretty good turn. Mountain. Beatdowns. Attempt to make... A little buddy? Oh, I think we might see our first stifle here. Ooh. Yes, we do. Disallow with the stifle technology. Counter target spell activated ability. Hello. Or triggered ability. And now the Niss is gone. Nance will draw a card. He'll play a planes. And he will simply pass the turn back, which is a great time here for Raymond Perez to play a Glimmer of Genius. I, it's been a real delight watching Perez play this deck mm -hmm. because I think that the management of using my life total as a resource, using my mana efficiently, and then pivoting the game around, he, he's been very, very fluid with it. Here's an Anticipate. He'll take a look at the top couple of cards. Didn't get a great look at what he took. I think it was a Gear Hulk. Well, he's, I, I would take that. I would select I'll that one. That, that one. Yeah. Now he'll draw a card for the turn. It was a Gear Hulk. In for five. And Nance, with a little bit of life to play with, thanks <laughs> to the authority, can take that hit. Authority? When, it's, <laughs> when authority's good, it's good. And when it's bad, it Wait, is so bad. I, I'm willing to bet it has done good work for Nance over the course of the weekend thus far. He's 10-2, mm -hmm. you know? Just not this matchup. Yep. Not this one. Those are the first cards to go from the sideboard. Main phase Glimmer of Genius here from Ray Perez to make sure that Lamhold Pacifist doesn't transform. He's up to 10 energy. He'll play a Spire Bluff Canals and enters the battlefield. Tap, pass the turn back. Nance on Perez's end step will pay a life to make a 1-1 here off the Westville Abbey. And now we go back to Hunter. Hunter will draw. Planes in hand already. I think he's just got another land in hand. Yep, just two planes. And there's a harness lightning. Presel on tap. He'll draw. In for five more. Nance will fall down to 11. The follow up. Oh boy. And not a good one to read. That's bad news, Hunter. Yeah, we got a reader. And Perez has some energy to work with. He does. Dynavolt Tower has shown up. Not a lot of copies in Ray Perez's deck, but he doesn't need a ton of them. Five energy to fire off a lightning bolt. As Nance is going to make another 1-1 one -one off the Westvale Abbey. He'll play a Canopy Vista and simply pass the turn back. Ray Perez, we might see another Gearhawk here. We will. It's going to end a battlefield tapped, and Nance would gain two more life, but yeah. Hunter knows I'm, I'm all done here. I'll go to 12, and I concede. 
Ray Perez will win game number one here over Hunter Nance. Blue Red Control will take care of Green White Tokens in the first game. But we get ready to take a look at the sideboards here between both players. And we laugh about the authority of the consoles, but realistically, those are out of the deck. Yes. So let's talk about what's going to come in the deck. Two Shrams Expertise, two Ajani Unyielding, two Blessed Alliance, two Natural State. Here are some one-ofs. Lamold Pacifist, Thalia, Heretic, Cathar. Fumigate, Quarantine Field, Stasis Snare, Fragmentize, and Heroic Intervention. Really not not a ton of hits here. There are, there are some nice upgrades here. I think the two copies of Ajani Unyielding are great here. I like the additional copy of Lamphole Pacifist. Uh, I think the Stasis Snare is fine to bring in. Um, a lot of Perez's ability to stabilize is predicated on Torrential Gear Hulk blocking. So even though creature removal is a little dodgy here, I think Stasis Snare is still fine. Um, and you could, if there are enough dead cards, you could talk me into the natural states as a way to fight down the Vault Tower. For Ray Perez, three Dragon Master Outcast, three Kozlex Return, two Ceremonious Rejection, two Dispel, two Summary Dismissal. A Jason Raveler Secrets, a Brutal Expulsion, and a Negate. I like bringing in the extra copy of, of Negate and Brutal Expulsion here. This seems like a great matchup for Dragon Master Outcast, too. It's not like Nance is packing a whole lot of removal spells, and uh, that's, a, that's a way of easily winning a game on a stabilized board. Well, these players will shuffle up. They'll get ready here for game number two while they do so. We're going to talk about a little change we've made to the SCG Tour here for 2017. It's our Infinite Challenge Package. Now, if you've played in the Star City Games, Dot com Grand Prix, like Grand Prix Louisville a couple weeks ago, you're very familiar with this. But we brought it to the SCG Tour in a different role. So each $80 two-day package includes entry into all of our challenge events all weekend long. We know that people love our challenge events. They're sealed, modern legacy. Uh, we mix it up sometimes with a little bit of vintage. Might see some Frontier here soon as well. And you're going to get a StarCityGames.com exclusive play map. For this weekend, it was Gamble. For future weekends, it could be Smuggler's Copter or Aether Vile. Take advantage of our extended side event schedule with an infinite challenge package. If you don't have time to play in the main event, or if you don't want to play in the main event but still want to play some Magic, go to StarCityGames.com slash schedule. Find what fits you and make whatever open weekend you come to the event that you want it to be. And maybe you're interested in playing Magic, but the idea of playing the same format for two days straight and 15 rounds is a little daunting or maybe not your thing. So you can dabble with a little bit of Modern, a little bit of Standard, a little bit of Legacy. Good way to mix it up. Back in our day, back in our day, you just, whatever the event was, you just, that's it. Yes. You didn't get to do anything else. So it's always nice to be, be able to have some options. Some, some uh, team drafts. Is that the colloquialism for them we're supposed to use on air? <laughs> yeah. Some team drafts. Some team drafts. Yeah. That was your option if you didn't play in the main event or did bad in the main event. Yeah. That was it. I'm looking for a team draft. My teammates are Andrew Jackson and Ulysses, Ulysses S. Grant. <laughs> if you have some similar teammates, we can sit down and do a three on three draft. Can I play with my good friend George Washington? <laughs> not you. Or is he not good enough to play <laughs> no, with? Yeah, you know, we won't play with him. He's not good enough to play with? Okay, that's fine. Right. That's fine. I'll go find somebody else to play with then. <laughs> I'm more looking for Washingtons and Lincolns. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, right. A little too high brow. Right, with exactly. Your team draft. That's fine. Exactly. Doesn't bother me any. Team drafting. And but then there's, uh, it's harder to get the team drafts as it, as it used to be. Which is unfortunate, actually. And then different time, different era. Yeah, different. Yeah. It was a different era. Yeah. I, I think on the balance, the, the community and the era that we have now is better for more people. Yes. But the grifter in me does miss. <laughs> does miss busting out of the Pro Tour by, let's call it round five. Yeah. <laughs> and then trying to recoup my losses with my, my friends Grant and Jackson. We're round five superstars at the mm -hmm. Pro Tour. That was, yeah. I got to play five rounds of Pro Tour Kaladesh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's as many as I got. Picked up my one win. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I was in Hawaii, so I got to make the best of it. But round five superstar. Ray Perez on a mulligan to six here. Hunter Nance has kept his seven. He'll scry to the top. Here we go. Fortified village, reveal a forest, and a Thraven Inspector. Here comes a clue. Over to Perez's fire buff canal. Simply pass the turn back back to Nance. Nance will draw. In there for one. Perez going to fall down to 19. And I think we might have a landhold pacifist here, perhaps. Is he thinking about sacking the clue? The pacifist seems. He's going to go with Heart of Kieran. So if he plays pacifist next turn, he can turn it on. Makes sure. some sense. Ray with the Spire Bluff Canal. Pass the turn back. The issue here is that if Nance runs into a counterspell this turn, he's just really far behind. 
Well, he's going to turn on the heart of Karen now and get in here for five. So this, I mean, this is a great start. Yeah, it was a little risky here. Yeah. I think my instinct would be to go with the pacifist, but. There's Harness Lightning to take care of the pacifist. We go back over to Ray Perez now. And it looks like Perez has drawn one of the sideboard to Dragon Master Outcast, which I expected to come yeah, in here. I had a feeling they were going to come in too. Here's Dynavolt Tower, pass the turn back. Nance is going to play an Oath of Nyssa, which will hopefully find him his third land. Gideon among the cards he's looking at. He's also looking at a Nyssa too, but the land is just more important, I think, than the other two. Definitely. And, and this land entering the battlefield on tap allows him to crack the clue, and that hopefully gets him to land number four, and then he's off the ground. Mm -hmm. Still potentially tough sledding here, as, uh, as we've seen. When Perez is able to untap, and the board isn't too bad, and he's starting to develop, uh, what he's doing is just much more powerful than you know a green-white token opponent. Perez going to come in for, excuse me, Nance going to come in for one, bring Perez down to 13. And Nance does play the planes. He'll pass the turn back. We'll see him sacrifice a clue here soon enough. Back over to Ray Future Pro we go. And Isle in the draw step. He'll play a mountain. Dragmaster Outcast is here. And see, this is the kind of card now that you can board in against this deck to overload the Stasis Snares. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, Jamoka's Command doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. So before, when Jamoka's Command was a card ubiquitous in these green-white decks, this was off the table. And it was a card they would likely leave in in a deck against a deck like Perez's because there's red removal mm -hmm. and the counters have value and some things have changed. Just here's an Oath of Nyssa. Top three cards. We have not seen this card in a, quite a bit because uh, it was usually alongside Ojitai's command. Mm -hmm. And that was the setup for long games. Here's Lamhole Pacifist off of the Oath of Nyssa. Nets will play a Plains. And now he can play a Nyssa with the mana that Oath of Nyssa is granting him. So even though it's Plains, Plains Fortified Village, Oath of Nyssa allows him to play it however he wants. The gate takes care of the Oath of Nyssa. Here comes a Thraben Inspector. Press down to 12. Remember, Perez's deck, no life gain here in the blue-red control deck. So it's all about managing the resources and managing the life total. And Perez has done a great job of that all weekend long. He's got a 10-2 and two record and in there. Uh. <laughs> With the Dragon Master. Yes. More of that, please. Mammal Pacifist. In there. Going to crew the Heart of Kieran. Here it comes for five. Perez has a Harness Lightning. Back in the day, this is where uh, <laughs> this is where our good friend Jamoka's command man. would be a beatdown. Really good. Yeah. The Heart of Kieran is dead now. And now Perez drawing to basically any spell to, to really clean up here, as then that allows him to activate the Dynavolt Tower, pull really far ahead. Another land hold pass of us here for Nance. And Perez going to untap very quickly and draw a card. Does he have land six? It appears that he does, and he's got, all right, Dragon Master Outcast number two. He's all in. Yep. This is all he's got. No hand. Yep. Dynavolt Tower with three energy. And I, I think Nance's line here was sort of predicated on, well, I have a Stasis Snare so I can curve out and then Stasis Snare the Dragon Master Outcast before it's about to go off. Mm -hmm. But now with the second copy, it's really tough. And this is a deck that does not handle 5-5 five, five dragons particularly well. Yeah, and Nance could cast Gideon this turn, but it, it, uh, it might also be more important for him to just Stasis Snare right now. I think it's... Ugh. Now there's Gideon. Gideon making emblem attack for ten is pretty good. Uh, this is I, I I I respect this line. Yeah, because this means if Nan, uh, I guess Perez makes the two dragons next turn. Yep. And he has four blockers. It does a lot of work on shutting down the Dynavolt Tower. Yep. I think this actually gives Nance a chance to win. Yeah, I think this is his best line. Yeah. Two dragons on the way. Perez draws a mountain, which doesn't help. And the other thing is he makes the two dragons, but it. I, I guess the Alpha Strike still doesn't make a whole lot of headway here. No, that's not true, because he could Stasis Snare 1. Uh, well, the he, Dragon he, Master Outcast. If he peels on a Stasis Snare, he wins. Yeah. He can also, I, he, also, all of the creatures have to get blocked here, so the second Dragon Master Outcast is just chump blocking. True. Draw a card. And he's at parity, too, because the, the Lamp Hole, the Flip Pacifists now are... They're five fives. Five, so they trade off with the dragons. Well, and one dragon gets snared. So yeah, actually, Hunter. Th yeah, this is great. This is great, yeah. actually. He's in great. This is a great spot for him. 
Now, what Hunter needs to avoid right now is old Torrential Gear Hulk. I don't know if I like that block, though, from Perez. If everything's lethal, I don't know what the difference is between a Thraben Inspector and a Lamphole Pacifist. I would have preferred to put Dragon in front of the Thraben Inspector and just chump the two pat the, the, the two, two butchers. Two okay, right. sure. Because then you have a blocker left over, and then if you draw a Torrential Gear Hulk, you're actually really far yep. ahead. Makes total sense. Makes total sense. Oh, I, I guess I guess the argument on the other side is if he draws a spell, then the Dynavolt Tower can kill the Thraben Inspector. How much energy do you have? Two? He had three. Okay. So, so there's two I, sides yeah, to yeah. it. There's two sides my, to it. My instinct was to put Dragon in front of the, the Thraben Inspector, but if he had spells that would allow him to cobble together a removal on both of them, then it makes sense. In any event, he bricked off, and, and we're going to game three. All right. Well... We're all tied up here between Hunter and Answer and Perez as we head to game number three as green, white tokens and blue, red control get ready for a third and final one. So I'll ask you this as we take a look at the sideboards here one more time. Now Hunter knows that Raymond has Dragmaster Outcast. Well, we know he's still got Stasis Terror in his deck. It, it, not a lot changes, right? There's right. not a lot he can do. I think he was leaving in, uh, I think he was bringing in as many copies of, Sta of Stasis Snare as he has access to. One, because he's got some bad cards in the main deck. And two, because he has to fight over Trunch or Girl Hulk anyway. And, you know, Dragon Master Outcast is certainly an even greater incentive to leave in the Stasis Snares that you have. It may push him to the point where he considers Quarantine Field. Okay. That, that maybe that's an inflection point, but certainly all the Stasis Snares are, are there to begin with. Well, they're going to shuffle up here and get ready for game number three. So let's take a moment and talk about the Versus series, two player play mats that are available today. You watch the Versus series. Michael Majors, Todd Anderson, Brad Nelson, Tom Ross, Ross Merriam. Sometimes we throw a little Jerry Thompson or myself in there. Well, you can play with those play mats at home now today. Head over to go.starcitygames.com slash Versus play mats. Pick up a Versus two player play mat. So you can play with your friends, mimic those guys that you see on StarCityGames.com all the time. And enjoy yourself as you test for your next open or invitational weekend. Again, go to starcitygames.com slash versus playmats. Order your two-player playmat today as we get ready here between Nance and Perez for game number three. Perez will be on the play here against Nance. And what I liked about Nance, that particular game, is he identified his avenue to victory. Mm -hmm. Not a great spot, obviously, facing down two Dragon Master Outcasts and only having one removal spell for one, but he played to win the game as opposed to panicking and playing a Gideon and going, oh, this sucks, I hope this all goes right. No, he just played to win. Yeah, it, and, and it was not uh, not necessarily a line that was going to win the game. He knew, he knew it. He knew he was dead to a lot of different cards in that spot, but it was his only shot, went for it, and Nance missed a couple draw steps, or Perez, rather, missed a couple draw steps, and now we're going to game three. Again, Perez will be on the play here for this third game. I thought game. we banned pile shuffling. I thought that was a thing that happened. It's one time, one, time per, one time per game. Okay. You get one per game. Okay. Sorry. But when I'm on camera, you're going to get probably two. Maybe three. Especially because well, I know you'll be watching. Yeah. He, do you think I'm above talking to the producer and saying, inform the judge that this no, person needs to be disqualified? Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. I won't, even, I won't even name you by name. I'll just say this person. <laughs> I don't think you're above that at all. And Othanissa here off of a Fortified Village, revealing a forest here for Hunter Nance. Take a look at the top couple of cards. He'll take another copy of Fortified Village. For Perez, he started things off with a Wandering Fumeral. Land number two is a Spire Bluff Canal. Nance will draw. Picked up a copy of Canopy Vista. Again, might be likely that enters the Battlefield Tap, but we'll see how the game does go. For Nance, what's his two-drop of choice going to be. He'll go with Heart of Karen. Nope. And he'll get negated. Press will untap very quickly and draw. Does he have land number three? He does. It's an island. He'll pass the turn back over to Nance. Nance will draw. Nance will play a forest. He'll play a land hold pacifist. Rebuffed. Mm. Mm. Yep. <laughs> I never get tired of that. <laughs> I gotta say, Mana Leak really annoys me, but Rebuff, when that card's You're good, totally fine like, with it. Mm, yeah. That is nice. <laughs> Nance now with the Sylvan Advocate. It's been a long time since we've seen that one. Perez looking at a summary dismissal that it he It looks like Perez just brought in every single counter spell that he had. He's basically. on the play now, yeah. so it makes some sense. There is summary dismissal. Nance will just pass the turn back. Let's go back to Ray P. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the lake. The lake? Drink it in. Uh, <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a canopy vista. Rebu oh, that's an, that's oh, an artifact. Whoa. That's an artifact. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. Slow down. Can't slow rebuff down. that. <laughs> Why not? But you know what? 
Yeah. I really like the games where rebuff is good, and I also really like the games where it's bad. Yeah, me too. I like them all. Yeah. Here's an anticipate. Top couple of cards. Harness Lightning doesn't it? No. Now, yeah. Raise Deck has some trouble with an 8 8. Yeah, 8 8s are big. Yeah. It's hard for Red Removal to kill 8 8s. Yep. This, this, is, is, this is what we call a known issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is a, this is a this real thing. Be, this might just be good. It, it just could be game over. It's totally in play. Ray is done anticipating. And now he'll, well, I guess he's not. Let's look again. He's found a card he's happy with. Two anticipations. Those are done. Now he'll untap and he'll draw. Play a hub. See, this is, this is the spot where it hurts to only be blue-red. Yes. Well, the big costs are no access to Radiant Flames, and if you touch white or you touch black, you have a lot more answers to just random 88 artifact creatures. When you're blue-red, if it sneaks through, it, th this is trouble. And your mana, I mean, if you're, if you're those three colors, your mana gets a little bit worse. Yeah. So if you're blue-red, you get to play a lot of basics. If you're three colors, you don't. So this is kind of the... Uh, the trade-off that Ray has to make, and Ray's hand right now is all reactive. Mm -hmm. He's got dismissal. He's got he's got summary dismissal, disallow, and revolutionary rebuff. So sure, he can counter a bunch of stuff, but who says that Hunter Nance is playing another spell? Right. I mean, he can just activate Westvale Abbey, attack with Virtuous Gear Hulk. And even if he draws what one could argue is the best card in his deck in Torrential Gear Hulk, what's that finding? Right. It's I not. mean, it's finding another card drawer. It's a it's a blocker, a Gear Hulk plus a red spell. Maybe gets it off, but mm -hmm. like. He's still got to beat the rest of Nance's hand. He's still got to beat the Westvale Abbey. Westvale Abbey will make a 1-1. One, one, and now Hunter Nance will draw a card. He's drawn a Plains. And realistically, I don't think that Hunter Nance has to catch another spell. And, and if Perez takes another clean shot here from the Virtuous Gear Hulk, then the Westvale Abbey is a huge issue because yes. he's going to 4. And even if he finds a way to trade off with the Virtuous Gear Hulk, he's got to beat a bunch of 1-1 one, one tokens. And that's something his deck doesn't do effectively either. Nance will make... Another 1-1. One, one. So, I think Ray P's best draw is Brutal Expulsion. Yeah. Bounce the Gear Hulk. But then he needs to beat it on the way back and also beat the Westvale Abbey. Well, he can counter on the way back. We know he's got counter spells. There's Draven Inspector. Man, taking a look at the graveyard. A little concerned about Torrential Gear Hulk. Hunter will sacrifice the clue. Draw a card. Play a land. Beat down a clock. Any brutal expulsions here, Ray P? He might just, yeah, he just has torrential. That's not going to do it either. Here is, at least I don't think that's going to do it. Let's see. Here's torrential gear hole. I think Hunter has Stasis Snare lined up too. Yep. Yeah. I mean, if he's got that, then it, then then I don't think there's anything for, yeah. for Perez to do here. There's Stasis Snare. We are all done here. Hunter Nance going to win this match over Raymond Perez. Two games to one. Green White Tokens will take care of Blue Red Control. And though Perez was able to counter a lot of spells to start, an artifact creature sliding through there in Virgil's Gearhawk in a big way brings Hunter Nance up to 11 and 2. I mean, you get. You get catch all counter spells for three mana, and you get situational ones for two. And that was a spot where Perez got caught with some of the bad twos against Virtuous Gear Hulk. He had Revolutionary Rebuff in hand. He also may have had Negate. I didn't get a look at his hand. Neither of those touched Virtuous Gear Hulk. And uh, once that slipped through the cracks.